trade review, um, a recap of the trades that I've taken during this week that ended on uh, Friday the 26th of June. A very interesting week because this time we've seen a little bit of pressure again on the main indices, S&P 500, NASDAQ going down and we start trading on some important technical levels that I think could be a make or break for the next few days, certainly this week to come. So we'll review that in an instant. Um, also we'll have a little look at basically the shape of what happened in sector rotation and it was also an interesting uh, week in that respect. But generally speaking, you know, again, a, a market with plenty of opportunities. We start seeing, I, some of you guys know that I'm not a, the, the biggest short seller out there. This is not my main forte. Uh, I, I, when I take a short, and it's basically the very specific criteria and filters uh, that come in in order to, to take my shorts, but I'm more of a long side player. But definitely, I've seen some opportunities, taken some shorts for position uh, this week, and I see some momentum as well showing up on these sort of plays. So um, again, we have to keep our eyes open. This week was punctuated with, again, a lot of news flows uh, related to COVID-19, especially what's happening with a big uh, pickup in the cases in the US, uh, Latin America, India. And I think that maybe the players are starting Again, trying to work out what's the dichotomy between what the market has been achieving as a performance from the, the end of March till now, almost basically 50% up on the on the S&P 500 and more than that on the Nasdaq, and what's happening in the real economy right now, where we know that we're in recession. Um, maybe this is the week where we'll see a make or break type of uh, and, and, and recollection of, of you know what we see in the real economy and what should be priced in the market. I don't know. I'm only training what I see. I never know exactly what's going to happen next. All I can have is basically a few indications on my technical analysis and certainly have plans to deal with one case or another, one scenario that will take over or the other. So we have to be humble as traders. We have to admit that the market is stronger than anybody else, than anyone of us, and we have to be humble enough to understand that we don't have the answer to all our questions, and we don't know exactly what's going to happen next. But the only way that we can prepare ourselves is basically having a plan of action prepared before the market opens on Monday morning, having a set of names that we're going to be trading, and more than anything else, having a risk management, a risk control that's in place in case we're wrong. Trading people, a lot of people that they tend to um, concentrate on the entry. And I tell you what, the truth is after many, many years doing that, the entry could be almost like a flip of a coin. I mean, the entry is maybe 10 to 20% of the equation on, on this trading business. The most important thing is the position management. And position management is, I think, a mix of risk control, money management, what's the size that you should be applying to, to compared to your account, position management. And a lot of this position management is basically when should I get out, if I make money or if I lose money. But... Position management is only as good as, and all these rules about risk and money management, position management is only as good as what we have in our mind, how strong and disciplined we are in our mind. So it all comes down to kind of psychology. So I'd say, you know, every time 20% is maybe the entry or the process, etc., but 80% of it is, called, is going to be all related to what's going on in our mind and of psychology and whether we're disciplined enough to follow all these plans that we've we've worked out during the weekend. Anyhow, I'm uh, not going to basically take much more of your time, but let's jump into it and I will, uh, we will start, I will just get rid of the webcam so we have full screen and we can appreciate the whole size of the charts. And let's start with the analysis on the uh, S&P 500. So S&P 500, we look at the weekly chart and as we've seen, the past four weeks has been really training in a range here uh, with the high that we've established, just check something up, with the, the high that we've done on the week um, ending on Friday, um, the, the 5th of June, 
And since then, we've basically had a market that's been in range, you know, still contain above moving average 2010.50 on a weekly basis. And let's look at the daily chart right now. And, you know, the daily chart again, very much so. Last week we opened with a gap down. We managed to bounce back, you know, from moving average 250 on the daily basis. Then we couldn't basically really fill up the gap that we had left the week before. And we, we were, you know, we got stuck just around above, um, just under 315 on the SPY, the ETF of the, of the S&P 500. And finally, on Wednesday, we started seeing some kind of um, pressure on the downside of the market followed by Thursday a pickup you know again a kind of bounce back close to moving average 50 on the dailies and followed by Friday uh, by some pressure with increasing volume on the you know on the way down definitely volume on Friday was hot, just short of 128 million shares with an average of about 108, 108 million we traded over the past uh, 20 days. So we had like a, kind of like a high relative volume day on the downside. This area that we're trading on right now, which is basically a convergence of moving average 50, 200 and 100 uh, is going to be key. So all this area around the 297 all around 297 and the low that we've seen on that candle on Monday the 15th of June which was 296.74 I mean this is gonna be a key and I don't know whether you know right now market uh, is trading around 301 so obviously we seems to be bouncing again from these levels but these are gonna be the key levels to keep 297 on the S&P. Let's have a look at the uh, the Nasdaq, and the Nasdaq also was kind of reflecting same sort of like market action. The, the Nasdaq seen some pressure from Wednesday again a little bounce back on Thursday and then followed by higher volume than average and downside pressure on Friday. We managed to keep with moving average 20 in this move and on the Nasdaq is an important uh, level. But again, if we were to break down with some momentum on Monday or Tuesday, you know, my next level would be around 230 on the triple Q, which is a Nasdaq ETF. Uh, that would be around that level, you know, that uh, uh, will have next level of support. But that would not bear... Um, that would not be the greatest for the market, to be honest with you. You know, in the context of all the news that we're seeing, and people might start seeing a convergence of, you know, negative news related to the economy, related to the COVID-19 cases, and related to what market action is showing up. And maybe it will start scaring people and all these people that have come in lately and this and, the, and on this big move. Again, nothing to get super worried about yet. Also, keeping in mind that. This level here that we have was the old high on the NASDAQ, all around 238 on the triple Q. So this also will probably uh, lend some support, but we have to be careful. Again, you know, we've had a fantastic market performance from the low of March to the recent high on the NASDAQ. The market went up 50, more than 52%. And at some stage, you know, you, you got to give maybe some breath to the markets, you know, to some space to, to breathe again. And that might be it or not. Again, I will trade what I see. But so far, we still have a bullish trend. The closer that we get to this high level the, and the more, you know, sort of consolidation we see on these tops where we've seen the recent high, you know, we have to be a bit careful not to go crazy, uh, especially on the main indices. Other than that, uh, as far as basically uh, what we've seen on the uh, sector analysis, we've um, we've seen this week a little bit of a shift in uh, in the market, and again we've seen. A little bit of an uptick on the week and the comeback of all the gold-related uh, ETFs, so all the gold miners like uh, 
GDX, GGXG, G, um, you know, come back, bounce back on some of the levels that we've seen. All you know, silver miners also related. So these were basically the, the sort of like let's say big winners on the on the sector on the industry uh, side of things. And again, you know, um, the the biotech ETF generally a lot of biotech stock did very very well. The, the ETF as a whole was okay, it was on the positive side again, uh, but not super you know impressive as a performance. And on the other end, we saw uh, quite a bit of a change on all the oil and gas uh, sectors, which had been like one of the favorites over the past few weeks, uh, probably to the fact that you know the the, the crude oil level started uh, finding some heavy resistance and as well you know probably some selling pressure that followed through on the related stocks of the sector so oil and gas was uh, definitely on the way down this week and also the the whole sector um, related to uh, related to um, home um, real estate some of the REITs uh, that also started correcting as well so as you can see Vanguard the VNQ the uh, Big, you know, was down five percent on the week. We saw um, other uh, type of um, related. Uh, uh, where was this? I was looking at it before. Now I can't find it. Okay, doesn't matter. I will. Will the home construction? See so again the iShares. It was also down four percent. The ITB, which is also U.S. home constructions related stocks. So. We saw some change in uh, some of the sectors in industry this week, which was interesting also to, to, to play. Now, let's go to some of the trades and also follow up on some of the trades that had opened uh, at the beginning of the week that uh, got closed. So starting with uh, SE, which is a stock that uh, I've been, uh, you know, Swinging for uh, for quite a while now. Uh, in for do for those of you who looked at the uh, the recap last week, like I said, uh, the trade uh, I had traded it and I ran that area here um, on the break. So all around basically the 72, 73 area. That's why I started you know, coming in uh, originally, and you know I kept basically these stocks on sort of trend following uh, basis and got executed stopped out this week to show you i was on that big day on the uh, on the 24th and i got executed just basically uh, below uh, uh, 110 so 109.90 that was my uh, last uh, portion of the trade that uh, i got out um, just check here and show you um, exactly just below that level here that was on the 60 minutes that I got my signal and just below that first level of consolidation that we had around 110.18 and once the market broke down moving average 20 first candle where I started seeing you know market pushing down through the consolidation area f below the moving average 20 and below the low of that uh, previous candle that's what I got out so just below 110 so out on the completely out on the SE and that was a, a, a great trade and another one of these great momentum stocks uh, that uh, did extremely well in the tech sector this time so let's also look at other things um, that I traded. Um, IDX was also one of the um, big movers. So IDX started uh, a position uh, at the end of last week on the 18th. And I came in at uh, run 192. Let's just make it a bit bigger here. Okay, the idea or uh, the original idea for the, again, I, I can't remember if I covered that on the on the weekly recap last week, but the idea was that we had a very big move the week before on that day, which was at state, uh, Wednesday, 17th of June, and the market uh, moved very quickly to a high on Thursday here at 
256. I didn't want to chase it. And the idea was that when my students, when we, we, we were reviewing the US market session, the idea was to, to look on, on the pullback and the levels that we ident identify as good area to start basically coming back in was 187. So that's what I did. You know, I, I was not the only one to basically come in that, uh, that trade on that, on that day. Some of our students also came in around the 190, 192, 195 area. And let's have a look at uh, some of the um, just check. Um, I don't know, one minute, maybe. Let's look at a five minute chart, I think. So let's go back to. Um, these were the trades that were taken. So entry was again on a pullback around that area, around the 187 that we had marked. And immediately, basically, we took some profits off VWAP, off the sort of like level that close to the high of the, of, of the, of the day, immediately secure the, um, the entry at flat originally the stop that we had on this thing was uh, a 20 20 cent stop it was quite tight but then again you know we the idea was to buy a pullback we had the moving average 205 minutes that was also providing some so 20 cents was was more than enough so first basically took a, um, a first partial at this level was corresponding to vwap which corresponded to also a risk reward of a ratio of one and secure the position with a stop loss at break even we didn't trade uh, the rest of the day at least i didn't and the the 19th was a kind of a flat day but what happened is that on the week uh, opening on the monday the 22nd this market basically started opening with a big gap up so there was the, definitely the move that we we couldn't follow through on on the friday the 19th we got on the monday the 22nd and first thing you know was basically getting out all all these horizontal levels that you see seen are levels that we're drawing usually on the weekly and daily basis they're they represent all our target profits that we will work out usually uh, if we have a cluster of these uh, resistance uh, levels then we'll, we'll that's how we basically set our levels for profit uh, as profit targets so got out here uh, um, at this level which was the uh, the second that the partial taken at uh, around 2.30, um, uh, sorry, around, um, just check my, my blogger on that. Am I looking at the right thing? So yeah, around, around that level that we had marked, around the, the 280 level immediately on the open. And then the second level that we had was 345, uh, also took uh, around three, um, just about 10 cents below that. And the last portion that we took out was here on uh, when we started having uh, the market uh, pulling back below moving average 20 on this big move also uh, going just below the uh, this level of consolidation that we had seen. So got out just uh, around 360 358 i think it was the exact uh, level and that was you know that was the end of the position just got out of everything below this break of moving average 20 on the five minutes bar chart okay these trades um you have to understand that when i take these trades and these sort of stocks they're going to be uh, even if i keep a position for a three position once i've secured my uh, my stop loss at break even i will keep it for one two days a lot of these stocks, you know, right now, they, they're still like sketchy companies. You know, I know that they basically go within the theme of the COVID-19 vaccines or, or testing um, devices, et cetera, et cetera. And, and, and the, the sector has been very hot these days. But you have to consider this, these companies as quite sketchy for, more, for the bulk park. I mean, we're not trading Pfizer. We're not trading Sanofi. We're not trading like all of these big pharmaceuticals with huge balance sheet we're trading about you know we're trading some stocks that have you know <laughs> very low float i mean in the case of uh, idex okay it's 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 a, it's, uh, it's a bigger float of uh, above 100 million 110 million uh, shares but and but you know market cap it's still at, at these levels right now 
um, three, you know, le less than four hundred million dollars. So you have to basically be quick. I mean, at least you know that's the way that I see things, and. Um, And so that was a you know a trade that I kept for a couple of days, but on the first day on the on, on the last day on the Monday when we opened, the idea was to secure you know all profits, especially when we were hitting all these uh, these big levels uh, that we established again on, on our uh, on our weekly and daily analysis. If you can see, basically these these were the the, the big levels that we had reached already. You know all this this area where we traded. Between like 187 to 84 was a was a very heavy area of of price crossers and resistance, but then you know 345, 436 was were, were the big levels as well where you know, profits had to be taken. And you know you have to you have to be um, you have to be opportunistic on this on these trades, and that, that's exactly the way that I see it. Obviously, uh, I could have decided and to go if you look on the on the 60 minute chart. I could have decided to, to, to take a short at this strategic uh, resistance level, and I'm sure that lots of people, you know, the, 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 the professional, like say, short sellers, the one that really make most 80% of their money, they went short on that stock, and, and and that's great for them. Again, not the sort of thing that I'd like to do, especially on these sort of stocks. All right, so that was uh, IDX, and other thing that uh, was trading on that week was um, a big mover uh, stock that I've been trading uh, quite a few times in the in the past and that goes in the theme of um, you know electrical vehicles uh, this has been talked up by uh, Trump uh, a few weeks ago that's when we had seen this big move in 2019 uh, sorry not two weeks it was like a few months ago he had talked about but uh, this week was uh, a very impressive move that we've seen on uh, on WKH um, WKH yeah, sorry so this stock was uh, came in uh, into our, um, our screeners uh, breakout plays and that's when we started playing here so let's have a look on the, the bigger context of things these were the big levels uh, that we had to go to between like say 460 537 these were the big area of of resistance that we had to to break through in order to start jumping to this sort of next levels around the 7 760 870 around 10 levels you know the 10 dollar levels these 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 were the big levels that uh, we had to aim up but this area force around the 5 dollar 5 uh, 5 Five and a half dollar was the big hair that needed to be uh, to be broken on the way up, and that's what we've seen uh, this week. And that's when I started to play when I when this stock came on our screener with the break at 5:37 um, on the 22nd of uh, uh, of June. You know that was uh, that was basically the, the main the main play. So um, came in, you know. I don't like to play these breakouts usually because we get a lot of fake breakouts. So what usually I will do is I'll, I'll put part of the position and I will wait for some kind of, uh, of of pullback either to the breakout area or you know a sort of mini consolidation where I can also establish a better risk and put the other the other half of the position. But uh, let's look at the way that uh, uh, this stock was was traded. And let's look at the other five minutes bar chart, for instance. So um, that's when I came in, you know, here. On the break of 537, which was a multi day breakout, uh, and started basically positioning um, here. Then, on, let's just check, I think it's better to see on, on the one minute. Uh, Guys, I can't uh, go back uh, on, on that. So, these were original in the one minute of uh, our chart, but that you know that the uh, the 
that that doesn't come back uh, to that uh, to that time now. So what happened is that came in first on the breakout, then on the pullback, and started basically taking partials immediately that we were reaching the um, the high of the day. So um, you know, originally original entry was like around the 534. If I'm looking at my blotter, 534. Then another basically pullback entry, but I was higher at uh, 560, and I was working um, stop loss of about uh, about 60 uh, 60 cents on uh, on both of them. So first partial was taken uh, with the 60 cents profit in mind and then next day we gapped up on this thing we reached out on this level of uh, big resistance between 710 760 which immediately you know took uh, some partial profits as well here and then the rest was kind of like uh, held on the, on the trend following type of basis uh, until we reached out the second big area of uh, of uh, resistance that we had marked on our on on our daily charts which was be around nine and a half dollars which were uh, you know I got out 945 and again um, last level was uh, marked uh, here close to let's check to the second let me just go back to the uh, if it the 15 minutes or the 60 minutes so this level here which was established as the second big um, another big area of resistance around 1030 10 dollars and 30 cents um, I was working a level here um, at that stage usually I will follow some when I've basically been taking good partials and all my stop have been moved up working at the trading stop I will I will work a, a trading stop all along the line of the moving average 10 on the 60 minute bar chart and I managed to basically the next level that I was working was 10 cents below the 1030 area so got out at 1020 all out on this thing that was a really really nice trade a really great momentum stock that we've seen uh, this week and again it came as a uh, part of our screen of multi day breakout Another stock that we traded also was uh, TBIO. Um, it was a gapper. It was on our gappers list here. And if you look at uh, the way that uh, we traded it, the idea was to. Um, let me go back to the five minutes bar chart because obviously I'm not getting. So the idea was uh, that we had a big gapper on that. Uh, the idea was to. Uh, work a establish an area on the pullback after the opening of the uh, of the stock and we had established that uh, 24 and a quarter uh, area as a, a good area to come back in um, I took a an opening price range uh, breakout here Established and so got in at uh, 26 and 5 cents, which was uh, just above, uh, just around that level here, 26 and 5 cents. That's why I got in with a, uh, a stop just below um, 24.15. So it was a quite wide stop, but you know, I, that's the only way that I could establish really my risk on that one. Um, the market starting running okay, uh, but unfortunately um, not enough to, for me to take any partials and to move my stop to break even. So on that one, you know, I was uh, I was stopped out at at a loss, and this is part of the business. You know, not all trades are going to be uh, successful, but that was you know one of the opening price range that uh, that we tried to take. Uh, this one didn't work out, and Good thing is that you know I got stopped out, but 
the market went a lot lower than that so always honor your stops that's the best piece of advice that i can give you guys always you know have a plan trade your plan and control your risk the way that it should be controlled so that was for tbio um another one that we traded was uh, that i traded was triple r so that was the that was the one stock that uh, i went short this one was also coming on our uh, bearish uh, multi-day breakout screeners and what happened is that the idea was to uh, uh, really look at so that's the way that, that, that let's look at a uh, bigger uh, picture on the on this thing on the daily so that was the multi-day breakout that we had that was on the day that i traded it which was on the on, the, on thursday 25th of june and let's look at some of the smaller unit of time so what happened is that the stock opened with a gap down moved down quite a quite a bit to ten dollars and then started bouncing back that's what I got involved. I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to chase these, these stocks, even if we get like a, a, a breakdown, especially, you know, when the market moves quite fast, this is not my play, but I will always basically try to position myself on the pullback. And that's when I found it. It was a perfect, almost like textbook pullback where the market went from the way all the way down you know, from ten dollars all the way up to this area of, you know we had this confluence this price cluster around all around eleven and a half dollars uh, you know almost basically filling up the gap that we'd left but also see the convergence of on the 15 minutes bar chart the convergence of not only price levels price resistance what used to be support becomes resistance now but also a confluence of moving averages that we that we found and we'll see also on the on the one minute uh, on the one minute stock price. Okay, that's that's the way that it's basically moving the the price moving back up after the opening uh, gap down all the way to eleven. I think the high was eleven six eleven and sixty one cents. I was working a short eleven and a half on this triple R stocks with let me just check on my uh, blotter in my notes a 50 cent stop which was more than enough 11 and a half with a stop just just above $12 giving me plenty of flex and to handle the market noise if there was to be more market noise immediately then the market basically bounced back off moving average 200 on the one minute bar chart and like i said you know i was showing you before the moving average 20 on the 15 minutes bar chart the price cluster that was also acting as a big resistance covered a partial here at uh, all around 11 dollars just above 11 dollars 11 and one cents and i moved my stop at break even at 11 and a half and uh, I covered another piece here on Friday. The 20, I'm sorry, it was on Friday. Uh, just check here. It was yeah, that was on Friday, on the on the pre-market, which was an area uh, was which was corresponding again to the low that we'd seen when would market did the market open uh, up and down on Thursday so that's when I, I covered pre-market on this one around the ten dollars just like a ten to ten dollar and five cents that's why I was working my level ten dollar and ten cents let me just check um, ten dollar five cents that's it yeah and right now you know I'll I'll just basically keep on working uh, this stock and on on sort of like trading stop basis and working several several levels so I will work uh, to cover some more around 880 eight dollars and eighty cents and then my uh, last uh, my last partial if I can take it would be around seven dollars and thirty cents 
if you look on the uh, on the daily you will understand that these are the levels that I've been that I'm working on as uh, short covering partial so eight dollar and eighty cents and then in this area seven dollars and thirty cents which is basically the next big area of support okay don't know if I'm if I'll get it if not right now I'm my stop is at break even I would probably uh, move as well uh, move it along as a trading stop on the hourly basis and um, and we'll see what I, you know what the market is ready to give me you know again you never know what the market has uh, to give and you have to basically be humble enough to understand that you know what you will be able to take that would be great if now you know the market decides to go all the way down to seven dollars it'd be I'd be grateful to the market but I don't know at this stage I'm uh, I'm not uh, I'm not making uh, these sort of prognostics and another stock that we traded uh, that I traded was um, VXRT which also was a big mover so let's have a look at the uh, what we had sort of like a big picture on that stock you can see you know this stock had been like on a long-term downtrend until basically we started again seeing some action and a February in all this uh, biotech sector and the whole the healthcare sector which you know started getting a, a strong bid but you know it had moved quite a lot for sure you know from $1.19 to almost like triple more than that, more than triple on big volume originally at at the end of February uh, but I had been in the range for quite a while and this week that's when we started seeing some big moves outside of this big range of 273 five dollars you know within that that big range of, of what we had quite a big resistance to uh, to get through and we, we saw that happening uh, on that so the first day that I uh, got involved on that thing was on the, on the 24th where again got uh, alerted on our screeners as uh, breakouts multi-day breakouts and let's have a look at uh, the way that this thing was traded So that was on the 24th, okay, the, where the market started basically getting quite strong bid, a high relative volume compared to all the, all the past few weeks that we'd seen, and that's when I started taking my uh, my first position. We had a breakout above this level 273 that uh, I had identified, but um, I and I didn't want to take the breakout, I, or I missed the breakout. I can't remember exactly, but. Uh, I waited for one once I was alerted and once I started looking at the at the at the chart uh, we, we were trading already basically too far from uh, from from the breakout era so waiting for a pullback first pullback that I started seeing here to VWAP and also corresponding very close to the first level of consolidation around 280 that's when I took my first shot and uh, came in at um, first entry was uh, basically 283 was the tenth uh, nine to ten cents uh, stop and immediately basically take a, took a first partial here and what happened is that you know took my first partial left my uh, my original stop loss unchanged because you know when we when, when I'm training on the on one minute and start establishing a, a first half a position I like to basically impose myself too much restriction you know being stopped immediately at break even I could have basically left my, my stop at break even at this level here but you know we were getting close also to this moving average 200 which always act uh, as, as far as I'm concerned, as a big support to the market, you know, so we had this big level of, of consolidation around 279. We had here the moving average 200 to 278 on the one minute bar chart. So didn't want to basically move immediately after taking a first partial, my stop loss at break even. So I kept it the original uh, stop loss, which was 10 cents below, and and intending to ride this thing. Then we had a second uh, uh, alert as a break of a breakout. Which was here above 301, so took a, a second part of the position as well 
on the uh, on the stock. Let me just show uh, a bit. Uh, okay. So took a um, another p part of the position, but you know, because I only took a f fifty percent original uh, size and played a breakout here. Took some partial when we reach that area at uh, around 320. So took um, took maybe like a quarter of the position that I've established so far, and decided to ride the to ride the momentum. So uh, if we look at the one minute bar chart, the rest, you know, we on Friday, no, was that Friday? No, was that uh, sorry Thursday, the 25th? The market opened very strong with an opening uh, gap up. It went basically above my levels where I'd established my uh, my uh, my levels, which was around the 350. So I was working like a target at uh, 340, which I uh, couldn't get done on the day before. But uh, when the market opened up, that's what I got executed uh, as a uh, my yeah, as a partial, and kept on basically taking partial the levels that I'd uh, drawn out on my on my weekly. So for uh, another level of resistance was following 12 cents, which uh, I executed here just uh, below that, about uh, about five cents below. And the next big levels was between four and three quarters and five dollars, which also uh, started uh, taking some um, some position off, and kept on on um, out. Then on the same day, uh, I saw that the market was uh, hovering close to moving average 200 and VWAP, and decided to, to replenish again on the on, on the position. You know, I had basically taken some partial, had some made, made some money on that, so I decided to go back into uh, into it and got back just around the, that level here at uh, 429, 430. I had a stop which was uh, about. Uh, but 10 cents below, took a partial here uh, around like 450, which was like a, uh, just above you know the VWAP again, and um, and continue to ride the uh, the stock again in my area here, which was sort of double top here, but getting back into my resistance area between 473 and the five dollars. That was the uh, that was the idea. So took some of the uh, the position out there, and kept on basically running it as a trend following uh, position. I was working some um, some orders to uh, get out of some more st stocks all around that area, 760, 950. I was working that, but the market opened very strongly on Friday. And you know, immediately basically got executed on the on the open. Also, uh, you know, we were reaching that big area between like twelve twelve dollars and thirteen and a half, which was to me like the ultimate uh, big resistance of that move. So, took everything out. I'd say just above, uh, just below twelve and a twelve and a, twelve and a half dollars, and was all out. At that point, um, the rest of Friday was like kind of you know the market uh, kept on basically coming back down, so didn't have any uh, any regrets, and that's it. You know that was a trade on the XRT. So again, another great biotech stock with great momentum, but again, you know you can keep a, a stock this sort of stocks for one, two, three days. I think you know maximum as a swing, but you have to be very op opportunistic on uh, on the on these ones. Okay, and last um, was a trade that uh, we took um, also on the basis of um, it was a gapper. So let's look at uh, what happened. That was a gapper that we had on the. On Thursday, uh, the 25th, the idea was basically, you know, we had a big gapper. Uh, I waited for a, a pullback area, which I identified all around the 5, 540 area 
came back right here okay and let me just check so pullback you know that was a real pullback play uh, after the, the big gap up entry was 540 that was uh, with the stop of the uh, 40 cent stops so I took immediately your first partial at uh, 580 which uh, also were corresponding to um, just go back to uh, see if I can get of the one minute bar chart yeah so let's let's look at the uh, the one minute bar chart it would be easier so that was the entry here at 540 at like 40 cent stops took immediately uh, a first partial which was like uh, corresponding to vwap and also 40 cents to make my risk reward on the first trade uh, equal to one and then scaled uh, out on the way up at several levels that I'd marked on my on my daily so uh, took out 680 which was basically 10 cents below the high of day then uh, a third partial which was taken at uh, 750 which was uh, uh, just below this uh, area that, that I had to, you know in between that basically at the area of 720 780 I was working like a sort of mid level at uh, 750 and finally um was riding this thing all the way up you know moving my stop uh, as a trailing and i was working next level that i was working was in this area that marked as between 9 15 and 10 20. so i was working a, a level just below um just like in between in the, you know the, 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 this range 915 1020 and that's why i basically took my last piece in the pre-market on on the on the 26 uh and got executed at uh at 10 20 on this one got got lucky you know in terms of the execution got lucky but uh also you know great momentum trade again you know healthcare sectors this one is slightly different we're talking about medical instruments and supplies uh but again you know a great uh, great ride on on these stocks and and you have to learn to be opportunistic to wait for a nice pullback to your support levels trigger it you know if you you will be able to also identify the true risk you know whereas if you start running after this stock on 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 the gap on the opening gap you might you might not hold your trade as long as, as you would if you were patient so be patient wait for the pullback trigger this you will establish uh, the tighter stops and a real um, your risk area and then just write it you know and just write it once you've basically established like, your first partial second partial you know secured your stop at break even just write the movement and keep your areas you know of next profit targets well established and follow the plan so that's it for this uh, trade uh, weekly recap and i hope you enjoyed it the idea of in these videos is really to take through the rational the process you know what goes on in my mind when i'm about to trigger trades why i selected that trader and another why did i pick on that stock how did i come in that stock? what sort of level of risk was i uh, taking on that and the sort of position management these sort of things they come after many many years of experience and many different type of successes and failures and you have to understand that it's not something that uh, comes immediately but you know i hope that these videos they help you to start understanding trying to trying to find your own place in in this trading world whether you want to be an active trader or less active trader whether you want to be an active sort of investor you know with some sort of portfolio of some single stocks etfs you will find something in these videos and i believe that you know that's why i'm spending the time to do that i'm doing that for my students i'm sharing uh, some of these videos with the greater public and i hope that basically they help you to find your way because these process and all these different aspects of the trading they are like four wheels of uh, four wheels of a carriage i mean it's not like i said at the beginning entry is probably 
the most or the least important of all these aspects of trading comes in the biggest part of the of our trading is what goes in our mind and the discipline that we have into establishing following our plan following our risk control following you know the, the size that we should be using compared to the size of our equity of our accounts all these little aspects you know they come in handy it's like different pieces of a puzzle that makes the whole puzzle at the end you know being what it is so um that's it you know i hope that uh, we'll see you next week if you have any question please reach out you know send us uh, an email you'll find the link in uh, the description comment also uh if you want you know i will definitely get back to you um and if you want to be kept up you know alerted when every time that we have these new videos coming out just click on the subscribe button and you will uh, you will be let known immediately when we have a new video out there. Okay, so have a great week and a happy trading week. Be careful. Capital protection. You've worked hard enough to save uh, this money that you're going to be using at some stage to make extra money. And at eTrading Academy, I pride myself to have the most efficient risk management control and strategies that we have out there in the business. I know what I'm talking about. I can promise you that that's my real strength is how about preserving your capital at the same time as making money, but making sure that you have the top risk control. None of these guys out there, they will use that. I can promise you that. I'm very confident about what I'm telling you now. So enjoy the rest. Uh, enjoy your week, you know, and again, subscribe, reach out if you need anything else. Happy to, to help. Okay. See you guys.